I wanted to talk about design tokens. You probably have heard a lot about them. If you've worked on design systems or you work with people that work in design systems, or maybe you actually haven't ever heard of them, but you're about to hear a lot about them. And some of you might be asking, well, what the f are design tokens? The most basic way to think about design tokens is to think about variables. But I say that with a caveat because there are a lot of people out there that may say design tokens saying they're just variables. Why are we even calling them design tokens? This is just designers like trying to rename things and that's not it at all. The way I see it is, so if you talk about responsive design and you say responsive design are just media queries, well, that's not really true. There's a lot of thinking and some strategy. Design tokens are not just variables, but variables are a very large part of how they work. And it kind of has a, a correlation to responsive design because responsive design is all about having a good experience on different size screens, where design tokens is taking that a little bit further and thinking about scaling your design at an atomic level to iOS, Android, so it's also platforms. What you'll tend to see is a list of variables. It might be a color button or something like that. It's just hypothetical. Usually that manifests itself as either a SAS variable, which is my favorite CSS preprocessor, SAS, I love it, or, you know, might be a vanilla CSS variable, a custom property. You might even see a more JavaScript focused system. There's a lot of different ways that these values represent themselves. The great thing about design tokens is that they are agnostic. Yes, they work with SAS but they can also work with TypeScript, they can work with less, they can work with XML. If you've ever had to localize content on a website, usually you will have whatever the content is, like the, the headings, the paragraphs, you would have that wrapped in a token. And then that token gets past the correct uh, language. So it might be an English language, it might be Japanese, it might be German, that gets passed through and then you get displayed whatever the proper language is. That's tokens for localization. This is the same concept for design. When I was at Salesforce, which is where design tokens as a concept originated, and I'm not saying that we invented variables. We did not, that, that's not what I'm saying. But the term design tokens and like this whole process and methodology came from Salesforce. And we needed to scale our design to our Lightning platform, which back then was called Aura. It didn't use a CSS preprocessor like SAS or LESS or Stylus. It actually used its own system using very similar tech to what I just described with localizing content, where in the CSS that was being compiled, it was like a Java-based thing. Wherever you would put a value, you would put that named token and wrap it in T parenthesis name of token, close parentheses. And then that gets injected with stuff that's coming from XML data. Now our design token system was generating that XML data. And then we also generated SAS for the teams that were using SAS. We generated Android for the teams that were using Android and so on. So where did that data come from? You can store your data in a lot of different ways. In that time, SAS maps didn't really exist. Um, they weren't quite released yet. So we, we did it with JSON. And now since then, I've moved more towards preferring YAML just because I find it to be a little bit easier to write. But you know, you can do YAML, you can do JSON. Some people use spreadsheets, you know, it's whatever works for you. You store your design language in as data. And so all your colors, your font sizes, your spacing. For people familiar with CSS, anything that would go behind the colon could be a design token. But it goes a little bit further than that because it really it's not just about design values, it's really anything that can become a string. So you can store media queries. If you are encoding images as data, so you can have it embedded in your CSS instead of as an image, which some people do, it's, you know, there's arguments of if that's a good practice or not, but let's say you are doing that, you can store that as a token. Let's say you have all your colors stored as data, and that is owned by the design system team, which could comprise of designers and engineers. 
I mean, really, at the end of the day, it's owned by everyone. It's a shared ownership, but maybe the design system team is maintaining it. Historically, what you might have seen is that, like, let's say a color did not pass a contrast test for accessibility. And so now I need to change that color and I need to file a ticket on the Android team, on the iOS team, on the web team. If you're working at a big company on Salesforce, those within themselves could be several teams because of all the different products and features and things that you're working on. A lot could be lost in translation and communication. But having your whole design language as a set of design tokens, I can make the change on my end, push that up, and then when all these other teams pull in whatever the latest is in their systems, they just get that color change. Ideally, you have proper testing in place to make sure, you know, like visual regression testing, otherwise known as screenshot testing, you'll want to make sure you're not like breaking things. But assuming all the tests have passed and everything is up to par, that gets distributed out into all the formats and all the context that you need. So for companies that have mobile apps as well as desktop apps as well as web apps this is amazing because it, it's agnostic to whatever those code bases are but still can carry through the experience what's also great is if you architect it in a way that can be extendable which a lot of the design token tools that exist now do have like theo's the one we worked on at salesforce you can have a global set of tokens that everything takes and then for certain things like maybe for desktop, you want to change the heading to be different for whatever reason. You can pass through new values specifically for the desktop context. They can be overridden and they can be extended. Storing all that basically goes through a build process. You might use Theo, you might use Style Dictionary. Again, there's a lot of tools out there now. That will generate whatever you need for Android, for iOS, for web. And on top of that, it's not just sending that data over as is. If you're using a good tool that knows what it's doing, it will actually understand that this is going to Android. So this transparent green is going to come through as an eight digit hex. But this platform is web. And so this transparent green is going to be an RGBA context. Same thing with values for sizing. So like Android might use DP or SP where, you know, for the web, you might choose to use REMS. A good tool should know to change it for those different contexts. Also a good tool should allow for human intervention. And so like that was something we did with Theo. I'm partial to Theo because I worked on it with my team, but you know, style dictionary is also great. So Theo was great because I would actually declare for CSS testing purposes that this whole file that I have can only be used for background colors. But maybe there's one color on that list that actually can be used in other areas. So I can do a global declaration of whatever testing data I wanted to have the whole file recognize. And then on an individual token level, I can override that and say, you know, this can actually also be used for borders as well. You can pass in really any data you want. Like if you wanted to mark a token as deprecated, meaning it's gonna get deleted later. And then maybe you're looping over your tokens in your documentation. You can actually flag tokens as being deprecated and either mark it as such or even hide it so nobody else starts using them. You can have your terminal let you know that you're using a token that you shouldn't be and which one's these instead. So there's a lot of interesting stuff you can do with them. The cool thing about what um, design tokens have enabled is that it's made big efforts like dark mode or if you want to do like user configurable settings um, like cozy compact spacing or even offering like white labeling where you um, let customers brand their experience. All these different things that kind of like make things a lot more complicated from a systems perspective. It's a lot easier to achieve when you have design tokens in place. If architected well, you can have the stability you need where you never really need to touch your CSS unless there's some extreme circumstance and everything can be configured through your tokens. That's like the ideal world. You know, if we want to redesign our product later, we just like change around some tokens and 
boom, you know, a bunch of it's already covered. And we might find ourselves having to add more tokens over time. Like maybe we didn't have shadows before, now we have shadows. So you might find yourself touching the CSS to add those in. But if you have this system in place, it makes things so much easier. And then I think the last thing I want to say is really like why I'm so passionate about this. So I think like the tooling and the way you set this up is all great. I kind of nerd out about like how to organize and name things. But the thing I'm most interested in is the collaborative aspect of it. So like if you're talking about animation tokens, rather than talking about how many milliseconds something should be when it's on Android versus iOS versus whatever, if those are all mapped to named entities, then I can speak the same language with an iOS engineer as I'm going to be speaking with a CSS engineer and an Android engineer by saying duration instantly, for example. And that is mapped to the correct value. A friend of mine used the phrase Rosetta Stone when it came to design tokens. And I really liked that because it makes it really less about just having variables that you store your data in. It becomes like a mapping system of, you know, not, you know, not everything is going to be exactly the same on every device. Like, that's just not the reality of digital design. But we can get as much of a brand aligned experience through design tokens and still pass in the different contexts that you need for those different platforms. So I just think that, yeah, the Rosetta Stone analogy really resonated with me. But I'm, I'm going to stop there because there's I could go on all day about these. I just wanted to leave it at describing what they are. Yeah, I hope you go forth and tokenize your design.